By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at the opening match of the Hill Giant Cup. That's an old school tournament, Swedish uh, rules, with uh, Ravenna reprints. So you can uh, play with uh, same art, same frame reprints. And um, it's held in Hilversum, the Netherlands. And as I said before, this is the opening match. And on the left side, there is a player playing Troll Disco. And on the right side, the player is playing Blue White Skies. And you're seeing my playmat there on the right, but it's not me playing the deck, just to uh, be clear about that. And the player on the left has started with the Library of Alexandria. So that means that the Skies player needs to find a solution. And there's the first mox of the game. And let's see what Skies can do to solve this issue. Skies can be a pretty aggressive deck as well. So I wonder if he's going to play out some creatures here at this second turn. And there's a mox of his own and a followed by a ruby. That's some nice uh, jewelry there, black bordered on the table. Pretty impressive. And let's see. What's going to happen first? Of course, the library always drawing that extra card. Man, and, and, and you just started your first game at a tournament, and the first thing you see is a library of Alexandria from your opponent. That's not the best start. And there's a time walk there. And will there be an answer from the Troll Disco deck? And no, and he can just start his extra turn attacking there with the line. So that's 18. And let's see what Troll Disco can do. So there's some pressure on the board, but there's a second factory. So this is not really going to work. And that library is doing overtime. I think that's the third extra card that he has drawn from that library. And there's an underground C. Oh, he's taking it back. Maybe changed his mind there. Of course, you, you want to stay on seven cards when you have the library. They're playing a Mox Jet, I believe. So we got a lot of Mox in here on the board. And there's the attack. And I'm expecting a Lightning Bolt here. So this Vena line is attacking. And there's the Bolt. He's pumping it again, making it a 4-4. Four, four. And there seems to be some discussion here. And I, I think it'll stay alive. Oh, and now he has to play a double. So that's that's a high price to pay. And there's a counter spell. <laughs> wow. Okay, this went really fast. I think the uh, the Skies player bulleted it, forgot about the pump of the factory, or you know, I don't know, and then decided to play the uh, Psy Blast. And then there was a uh, counter spell, and then there was the Swords, and eventually the. Um, uh, the the factory is gone and the uh, line is still alive. But man, that took that took the Skies player a lot of valuable cards, and that's not ideal. And he's already facing that Library of Alexandria, so I think it's going to be very difficult for him to to win this game. And there is the first troll. So that's a, a three three, I believe. No, it's still a yeah, it's a three three because we have an uh, underground sea there. So that's a 3-3 troll that you can regenerate. So not ideal. And then you wish you still had that Swords to Plowsiers to take care of that creature. That's a pretty good answer here, playing that uh, Saranda Pafrit, the 3-4 flyer from the Arabian Knights. And he's drawing an extra card here. And it's nice to see this uh, Troll Disco deck in action. It's a nice matchup, two beautiful decks. And the troll gets to swing in for three, bring him down to 17, choosing not to block, expecting maybe a bolt as an answer. And there it is. You, you know, that's what Troll Disco is all about. Getting the discs, regenerating the trolls, and just blowing stuff up. There's a double attack there. It really doesn't matter anymore. Um, so that's five damage. It's actually pretty good value. and. The Skies player knows I'm, I'm going to lose my creatures anyway, so I might as well just deal some damage. 
but that means he's going to take at least 3 damage from the troll this turn. And the Library of Alexandria is still there. And there's another card coming from the Library of Alexandria. And there's that attack, so he's going to 13. And this is interesting that he chooses to activate his disc now, because he could have waited for, uh, for the Skies player to get the damage from the Surrender Perfreed. But I'm sure he had his reasons, because now he still has 4 open mana to play some spells. He's playing a Bolt here, bringing him to 10. And that's what I like about the Troll Disco deck, that it can also, it, it has direct damage. So you can do a lot of damage with the creatures you have, um, but you also have your direct damage to finish it off. And I like that combination between aggression uh, and um, aggression over the, over the ground on the battlefield with your creatures and aggression via your direct damage. And he's on 5 life now. And I can't see him coming back from, from this game. He's scooping and we're going on to game number 2. Game number 2 with the Skies player on the right side on the play after that win from Troll Disco. So I'm just hoping for the Skies player that he's not going to see another Library of Alexandria. And there he goes, playing a Tundra, playing a Zavanna Lion. So that's a great start for the Skies player. That's kind of the turn one that you would like to see. When you're playing Zavanna Lion, you just want to play them turn one. And let's see what the Troll Disco deck can do as an answer. Playing a Lotus. Cracking the Lotus, oh my good, oh man, I'm seriously, mind twist, ugh, yuck, I really, this, <laughs> this is brutal, I think if you're this guy's opponent now, after seeing that library in game one, and now a turn one Lotus into a mind twist for your second game here at the Hill Giant Cup, you're like, oh man, maybe I should just go home. The way I look at, look at these games, when this happens, it's kind of a bonus game. If you if you still get to win this one, I mean, you've just played great magic. And if you lose, it's so understandable because, come on, this is just ridiculous. So let's see what he's going to do next. He's added a Mox Jet there. He's added a Maze of If to take away the pressure from the Savannah Lions. And he's got a, still got a handful, especially compared to uh, the Skies player. And I think he's taken the two damage. They're not really using the dice at the moment, so um, I'll edit some life totals. So we can follow their, their life totals. I see the, the player, the, the Troll Disco player has done it, so he's on 18, as you can see. Oh, and he's played a Demonic Tutor as well. Okay, okay, I kind of missed that. Another attack, another maze. I still want to do it. Maybe he forgets or makes some kind of other mistake. And he's playing a Chaos Orb here. And what can you do? Two mazes and an orb? Okay, and there's a side blast. Not a bad idea. Just dealing some damage. Maybe that's the best way to go, you know, really trying to to win the direct damage rates here. I feel those two mazes of ifs are really a great help for the Troll Disco player to kind of set up his, his main game plan. And he's going to activate his orb. Oh, and he misses the flip. So at least that's some good luck here for the Skies player. So maybe that'll help him get back a little bit. And oh, there's an Ancestral Recall. So just when you think, okay, I'm having some luck, luck, maybe I'm having momentum here, there's that Ancestral Recall, and he's just drawing three cards for one blue mana. I mean, that card is insane. Best card of magic. And there's another attack. Sent back with the mace. But what can you do? And there's a lightning bolt on the Savannah line. And an attack here for two. And there's a disenchant. Okay, so maybe that was a little bit too greedy there, attacking with the factory. Although, you know, you need to start dealing some damage. And there is another volcanic island there, a factory on the side of the Skies player. But you need three creatures to get past those maze of ifs. I mean, yuck, that's just... Yeah, that's not great.
And I think that, that maybe, maybe stone rain is a little underappreciated. And there's a mana drain on the Afrit there. There are three four flyer from Arabian Nights get mana drain. That means uh, three extra mana for the troll player using it to cast a disc, Larry's disc on the battlefield. The disc that blows up everything, including itself. It's not a sacrifice mechanic. It says destroys. And it also works nice with factories because because it doesn't destroy land so your land is safe and there's a set troll there and it's not a 3-3 three, three yet it's still a 2-2 two, two because there's no swamp in play and it cannot rege regenerate at the moment so maybe the skies player can find yes there is a chain lightning the end of the set troll great timing there set troll is gone and there's a mox ruby And passing turn again. So we're kind of stuck here in this scenario. And I think that it's in the advantage here. Oh, and there's a lightning bolt bring the skies player to 13. And there's there's a bolt back. So they're bolting each other here, uh racing with the direct damage. So eleven against thirteen at the moment. And what I wanted to say is that I think the standstill scenario is probably best for the uh troll disco player. But we'll see in the end. And there's a time walk. And it can resolve. Just means an extra land in this case. And there's another lightning bolt, but a counter spell. So that means that the troll disco player stays on 11 still. Oh, and something's coming. And there's a Sarah Angel. Classic. So a Sarah Angel on the board, trying to tempt the troll player to activate that disc, but I don't think he's going to do that with two Maze of Ifs still on the board. He has all the time in the world. But at least when you're a Disguise player, you think, okay, I have three, I have two threats on the board, so I only need one more uh, threat, maybe forcing him to, to play that disc. Maybe add Alliance or something there and keeping some extra creatures there on the backup. On the other hand, you know, when he blows up the disc, oh, and there's another bolt went very fast there, but it means that the Skies player is on 9. When he blows up everything, it also means that you have to start rebuilding again, and it doesn't blow, blow up the lands, so you still need to find a way to get around those two maze of ifs. And let's hope for the Skies player that he only plays with two maze of ifs and not four, because they're not restricted, so... And there's a chain lightning. 4 3. It's taking a moment to read it here. <coughs> and let's see what's gonna, gonna happen. He's sending it back, actually. Oh, that's funny. He's chaining the chain. You don't see that often. I like it. And uh, it means the troll player is on 8 and the skies player is on 6. That's pretty cool. Chaining the chain there. Passing turn, passing turn. So we're still kind of stuck. But when you're a troll disco player, you know, okay, all, all I need is uh, two more bolts. And I'm there. And of course, keeping some, um, some counter spells on the backup. And there he's playing a set troll. And this time, because he has underground C, he has a swamp in place. So now it's a 3-3. Three, three. And I wonder what's going to happen next. If he's going to attack with it, um, what's going to happen in terms of activation of discs. It's going to be interesting. I mean, is it going to blow up the disc, regenerate the troll? And then just having the extra creature on the battlefield. Let's see what's going to happen. Oh, and there's a Guardian Beast. Oh, I love that card. I wish I had a copy myself. I love artifacts. I love Guardian Beast. Guardian Beast says, as long as it's untapped, your non-creature artifacts cannot be further enchanted, destroyed, or taken under someone else's control. So this works fantastically um, with, for instance, the Chaos Orb. Like, you can keep flipping. But also with the disc, because it's not a sacrifice effect, so the disc stays in play. 
So it's pretty cool. And it's also a 2-4 body, actually. So besides it just being a great creature, it's also 2-4. So it's not easy to, to remove it from the game. And this is going to be interesting. What is he going to do now? Just activate the disc to get a free pass with the troll, or because he knows that the Skies player will still have that factory. So if, if that factory tur turns into an assembly worker, hey, then it's a creature, and then it gets destroyed. So what is he going to do? We're still kind of at this at this standstill vibe. Okay, okay, here's going to happen. So combat, Guardian Beast attacking, Satchel attacking. And this is interesting because the text on Guardian Beast is quite clear. It needs to be untapped, and now it's tapped. So when it's tapped, the artifacts are not protected. On the other hand, what does, does he want to protect? Because, okay, he's, he's losing the disc then when he blows it up. But, I mean, he has two mocks and uh, the ruby and the jet, but you don't really mind them getting blown to pieces here. Anyway, we see the block with the Sarah Angel and the block with the assembly worker. And probably the assembly worker is going to pump up himself to stay alive here because it's a 2-4 guardian beast. And he's tapping to stay alive. So now damage resolves. So he's regenerating the Sedge. That's why he tapped that uh, jet over there. What is he going to do next? Is he going to use the disc? And he is. He's blowing it up. And let's see what's going to happen. Disc is going to go. I think the Moxen are going to go. Because the Guardian Beast is tapped. And exactly, yeah, the Moxen go. But it doesn't really matter that much. He has enough mana. More than enough mana. And he still comes out ahead. I mean, it's, it's a great play. It's a, a great play, but it's a logical play to make. There's the... Ooh, nice. There, oh, yeah, Counterspell. Counterspell on the Swords to Plows here. So that's not going to go through. Another, another Swords? Sorry. And another Counterspell. Wow. Two Swords on one Satch Troll. And at the end... The set troll is still there. And another swords? No, no, there's a Savannah Lion. It kind of looked like for a moment he would play his third swords to plow seers. That would have been hilarious. Three in a row. But the set troll is still alive. That's a strong set troll. And let's see what's going to happen. And there is a really big fireball here. But a blue elemental blast. Oh, so he's saving his ass. I thought that was game, actually. But he's saving himself with the blue elemental blast. And I'm, I'm sure we've got the blue in there. Oh, and there's another. Oh, that was hilarious. There's Swords of Plows here. It's number three on the same set troll. And finally, it's gone. In Dutch, we say the Aanhouder wins. Meaning, just keep trying. Be persistent. And, and you'll find victory at the end. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. However... Um, despite the fact that the set troll is gone, I, I still feel he's very much behind. And there's another disc. Or very much, but he's behind. Another disc around the battlefield. They're looking at each other's graveyards. And look at the size of those graveyards. Wouldn't it be great now to have um, that card from the dark for zero, that artifact that lets you just remove the graveyard of the opponent and then just use a time twister? Especially for the Skies player, you get all your swords back and he doesn't get his... Um, he doesn't get his uh, set trolls back because they're removed with the uh, with the swords. Anyways, back to the game. Uh, we just saw a disc activation, and now we see a pretty big attack here with double factory, but there's a double disenchant. So the battlefields are empty again, and we're going to look at lands staring at each other. And there was a nice red elemental blast on uh, the ancestral recall there being cast from the skies player. Look at those graveyards. They look like decks to me. There's a Library of Alexandria again. At least now he has an answer with that strip mine. But you also want to use your strip mine for the um, for the maze of ifs. I think the Skyswear is just waiting first for the opponent to fill his hand up to seven or just up to six, of course, and before you draw card number seven, activating the strip mine. Why would you do it earlier? And 
He's thinking, I mean, yeah, yeah, he's stripping the library. I, th I think it makes sense. But at the same time, you know, you have to, at a certain point, get rid of those maze of ifs. And there's another set rule. There's another source. I believe he's now played, this was source number three or four. I don't know. They're just quickly going through the deck, but, um, you know, it's okay. But there are two set trolls now in the removed pile. You can see it there in the corner of the screen. And there's still that uh, Savannah line. And there's another disc. Probably plays four discs. And there's a library from the Skies player. And there's a set troll again. The interesting thing is that both decks carry direct damage. So there is, besides the creature plan, you have your direct damage plan as well. And when you're a disguise player, you've got to have that in the back of your mind. You know, I, I still have some direct damage plan. There's a blow up, activation of the disc, regeneration of the set troll. That's pretty much what. Oh, and that's game because he was on six. So a successful attack with the Satch and a lightning bolt. And the Skies deck loses against the Troll Disco deck. So Troll Disco wins this opening match at the uh, Hill Giant Cup here in Hilversum, the Netherlands. If you would like to see more matchups, uh, more matches played at this tournament, keep an eye on the channel because I will be posting more. For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. Ik het was, ik het is, somba,